This is Sister Lisa again with Praying with Purpose. And we're going to be talking about part two of Demonic Shortcuts to Heavenly Realms. Now, in the first session, we talked about, you know, in the Old Testament, how God did not want any of his people to, uh, you know, delve into any of these unholy practices for a reason. And I'm going to be talking more about the New Testament because in this season and time, it is important to have the spirit of discernment because there's a lot of things out here. False doctrines, false prophecies, false teachings, you know, um, false anointings, false powers. And you thinking these people are, you know, great, you know, wonderful, you know, they have, you know, awesome anointings seemingly, anointing powers. But some of these powers can be demonic in nature, especially if they're operating in witchcraft and sorcery, which is the work of the flesh. And see, as I go into the New Testament part... You know, this is all the work of the flesh. If you are trying to access heavenly realms without God's help, without praying, without going through Jesus, without following the protocol in the scriptures, seeking the Lord, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, you know, uh, letting Jesus Christ be your Lord and Savior, and you want power and dominion, authority, and riches without God's help, then you start operating the works of the flesh, which is witchcraft. One, one uh, work of the flesh is witchcraft, sorcery, and there's some other ones I will go into, because any other method that's not God is demonic and ungodly. And you're going to get some uh, results that you don't want to because whenever these people, you know, you know, delve into witchcraft and try to, you know, use occult practices and new age beliefs and meditation and chants and, you know, different mantras and, you know, meditating all day and trying to project their bodies out of their spirit. You know, there's consequences to that. And sometimes the consequences can be uh, uh, early demise, uh, uh, you know, the enemy comes to collect. Or huh, in the afterlife, if you keep on doing it, you don't repent, you don't turn back, you know, from your wicked ways, you don't, you know, tell the Lord I'm sorry and denounce all these spirits or denounce all these unholy practices, uh, you're going to be burning forever, forever, forever. You know, that's another consequence. So I'm going to be coming from Acts 8, where this particular man seemed like he had all the holy goods, right? Acts 8 verse 9, but there is a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was some great one. There is a spirit of bewitchment now. There is people that are, you know, throwing in a few of those scriptures there to make seem seem like they're legit, that they're authentic, they're a true voice from the Lord, but they are bewitching, they're beguiling, they're deceiving. And that's why it's important to, uh, study. you see this big old Bible here? You need to be reading that Bible day and night, every day. Don't uh, don't just assume just because they said a, a scripture that oh that's it. Don't don't just believe everything people say out their mouth. You better study that word for yourself. And so how are he able to bewitch the people? Let me keep reading Acts uh, eight, and now I'm in verse ten. To whom they all gave heed, not hear heed, not testing the spirit, not using the spirit discerning, and seeing this particular day and age, it's it's not good to be non discerning. You know, not seeing. You know, not breaking down the word, right? Dividing the word, you know, testing spirits, testing the word, uh, making sure it's a doctrine of Jesus, not other doctrines, other teachings that people throw in, you know, because people just throwing in stuff, you know, and say, oh, this is part of the word too. No, it's not. If it's not in the Bible, it's not written in this Bible, in the scripture from Genesis to Revelations, then I I'm not going to heed to that. Now, give heed from the least to the greatest. That means the babies up to the ones that know better. Been praying to the Lord, been seeking the Lord, been, been with God for years and years and years. From the least to the greatest, got deceived. So the very elect, those who know better, was giving heed to this and being bewitched. Oh, this is a wonderful word from the Lord. Oh, this is a prophetic word from the Lord. Oh, this must be from God. He is so great. He's showing us signs, wonders, and miracles. <laughs> the enemy got power too. He can show you signs, wonders, and miracles. But it's coming from demonic spirits, demonic sources. And there is a, you know, catch <laughs> in using all of that. Now, and to him they had regard, oh, uh, verse 10, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Really? Uh, first of all, he used the sorcery, but since they didn't give heed, they were non-discerning. Uh, they were watching and praying. They weren't testing spirits, you know. Apparently they weren't studying the word and going back to the word because if he had time to be with you, that means none of you all them folks. Just like I read somewhere where like all the people went to Jim Jones mm -hmm, had, and he had them drinking some juice and stuff. 
and they had they said when they collected, you know, all the you know the remnants of after they had passed away and died and killed themselves, there was no Bible in sight, really. So y'all listen to somebody, didn't use any scripture, any word of God, right? Nothing. You just kept on giving heed to it, getting bewitched and bamboozled. And see, that's ignorance in itself. Even the babes know to read the Bible, you know, and study the word. But from the greatest, the greatest and tell the babes, we might want to check this out. You might want to read this again. You might want to study this again. They got bewitched too. Really? And so, great man of God, verse 11, to him they had regard because of a long, long time. You've been in that church 20 years. They've been bewitching you for 20 years. Not once did you test the word. Not once did you uh, ask the Holy Ghost for a spirit of discernment. Really? Not once you didn't do none of that? A long time. This ain't for like no few minutes. This stuff like look like some months and some years. We don't know how long. Long time is a long time to be deceiving bamboos and not testing the word, testing what people are saying to you. Mm -mm. All right. For a long time, he had bewitched them with sorceries, works of the flesh, deceiving, making it seem like I'm a great man, laying hands on people and seem like they're falling out. No, them spirits are reacting to the spirits that are in them. Beezabub can't cast out Beezabub. That's why I used to watch some videos going, really? And they saying, uh, you know, hold your peace and my, the mind of God, you know, loose here or something like that. And you see them spirits just, just jerking and jerking. They're not coming out. They only come out with pure vessels, praying vessels, vessels in authority, not people that are spooky and demonic acting. They're not using unholy practices in order to get out these spirits. If you are operating like Jesus Christ, you can't be having none of this stuff in you or using any demonic ways to seem like you have great powers and anointings. No. All right. Now, he had bewitched them with sorceries. Acts 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip, <laughs> here come the real, from the fake. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. See, notice how people don't be talking about Jesus. And they're not the ones that just throw in Jesus once in a while. Notice how people preach the word, teach the word. Notice how they prophesy. If it's not in the name of Jesus, it's not in the book, uh, uh, this book here. If it's not in the word of God, you got to test words that come out of people's mouth. You got to test them, try them, and judge them. No, you're not judging people, but uh, you better judge their words. You don't get deceived. Now, name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, even, even the warlock got baptized. Um, he continued with Philip and wondered, behold, the miracles and signs which were done. And if you read the rest of this, verse 18, I'm going to drop down. And when Simon saw that through the laying of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. See, when people are, you know, want you to give them money, or they want to invest money to, you know, have this great, you know, meditation power, to be able to lay hands and cast out devils, to be able to read people. You don't read people. Either the Lord give you the word or not. We ain't reading no folks. You're supposed to have word, the word of God in you. And if the Lord reveals something to you in its indecency and order and the Lord releases you, you give a prophetic word. Not reading people, reading numbers, reading their mind, reading their signs. And people will pay a whole bunch of money just to find out what's my sign, who I'm going to marry, is my business going to flourish, what's going on in my life. They're always looking for reassurance and people will pay. People will pay to get some type of word, not a word from the Lord. Because the word of the Lord going to probably say turn around and repent. You know, he might say, get your house in order. You know, uh, every prophetic word, a true prophetic word. Read all these prophets back in the day. You didn't want to meet one of these prophets. You you want to make sure you in, you together. Uh, you ready to be repenting. <laughs> and you ready to hear what God has for you to, you know, to, uh, to do. You know, they want easy to hear no, no prophetic word. You know, but, you know, people are paying thousands of dollars, you know, to be able to do this. I want to be able to meditate. So I'm going to take this mind manifestation class. So my mind, I can manifest and speak. And I can manifest everything I want. Mm -mm. And paying people thousands and thousands of dollars. No, ma'am. Uh, and no, sir. You can get, a, you can get, uh, you can pray the word of God. You know, and you can seek the Lord. <laughs> and you can get everything you need for free. Now, I do believe in coaches. You know, I believe in people, you know, seeking out, you know, you know, advice and godly counsel. But sometimes your greatest counsel is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you know. Uh, and Peter said, verse 20, I mean, Acts 8, verse 20. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You cannot purchase 
gifts. You cannot purchase or, you know, bamboozle your way or deceive your way or do tricks and schemes by meditating all day, reading certain books, you know, uh, you know, you know, studying alchemy, you know, studying different doctrines that think you're going to get them powers overnight. Oh, yeah, you can get them powers. You can get them the money powers. And then they're going to come back and collect. Wonder why they tormenting you, vexing you, you know, uh, causing havoc and chaos in your life. Because when you are deviling in those unholy practices, you are offering the enemy free access to destroy and wreak havoc in your very life. So, and then, then Peter said, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purposed with money. Verse 22, Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven. For I perceive, verse 23, I'm in Acts 8, 23, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. So, that right there, that right there, you don't want to do none of that. And if you go in Galatians 5, these are all the works of the flesh. God does not want us to delve in any type of means to access power and authority because it is a consequence, a demonic consequence and an eternal consequence if people don't turn around and repent. Because there are some people preaching and teaching and prophesying, saying, I did this in your name. I laid hands on the sick. And the Lord's like, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. You don't want to be one of them workers. You want to be a, a servant of the Lord saying, I finished my course. I did what God told me to do. And so in Galatians 5, as I wrap up, Galatians 5, these are the works of the flesh and witchcraft, sorcery, uh, med meditating all day long, you know, chanting, mantras, all of this sorcery, witchcraft, works of the flesh is not of the Lord. It's a work of flesh. And we're supposed to operate in the spirit of God, not the flesh. All right. Verse, I'm in Galatians 5, and I'm just going to read verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifested. Yes, witchcraft can manifest as great powers. Sorcery, wizardry can manifest as great powers. You know, people don't levitate for no reason. People don't just have all of a sudden, you know, things just appear out of nowhere. They will manifest if you keep on working in your flesh that they manifest. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. And I told you in the book of Genesis, this is where all this foolishness came from. All this occultness and trying to be like God's enlightening your God consciousness, higher vibrations. I'm in another dimension and realm. The only dimension I want to be in is the dimension of the Lord, which is glory, hallelujah. You know where his angels are in Jesus. And so, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations. And we're going to stop right there. Idolatry and witchcraft. These are all works of the flesh that manifest. And all, this other, all, all these other works of the flesh, they come with it. Anytime we're doing anything in our flesh and not in the spirit of the Lord, not led by the Lord, and we're doing other stuff, that is not God. Now, and you and people want power. People want authority. People want success. People want health and wealth and all this kind of stuff. They want husbands, wives, great businesses. You know, you know, baby, obtain wealth, all that great stuff. But you gotta do it God's way. And the only power that you're gonna be able to get is the Holy Ghost power. And so in the next, you know, videos, we're gonna talk about how we do it the righteous way, the holy way, the Jesus Christ way. It is a process to be powerful in God. It's a process to be successful. It's a process to be, you know, wealthy. But you want to make sure you're doing it in God. Because in God, it's going to be sustaining, longevity. <laughs> it's going to be eternal. All this other stuff is temporary. And eventually, it's going to, you know, fizzle out. And you're just going to be back to square one. So, pray with purpose and power. And don't be doing none of this stuff.